this van comfortably seats a 90 pound dog plus me 150 pound man now we got this hooked up back here so here's all our stuff but then here's tipsy's area like the bed elevated from the floor but i can also if i need to i can just lay down right here and we're just chilling so technically we could live in here for a while so i started training dogs actually when i was living when i was living in la so it was 2018 to 19 and i had actually went to la moved to la to pursue like my lifelong dream of playing music being on camera all that but then in retrospect i realized like I went to LA, sure, it's like play music, but really to find out that I'm supposed to train dogs. <laughs> so we're gonna work with Kalua. Kalua is part of the training behavioral department. Um, extremely, extremely intelligent dogs, super friendly, super sweet. Dog selective, like she likes certain dogs, usually big males she's like super friendly with but has a really high drive and just incredible, incredible dog to train and work with. So we're gonna get her out, get her going in the yard, do some cool stuff and um, just help her kind of relieve some of like the stress that builds and builds every day. And the longer they're in their kennel, the longer they can start to really like deteriorate over time, especially their behavior. It's just so stressful being in the kennel, you know, 23 hours a day, 22 and a half hours a day. So the more we can get them out and channel some things the right way um, for them. We hope the better over time. And uh, she's just an awesome dog and she loves to train. So let's do it. Mantessa. If you check this board right here, these are all the residents we have right now. Each dog gets a different color or depending on their behavior, like TBD only means training behavioral department only. So only we can walk them. Obviously staff only means anybody staffed. And then these colors go inside with this for our volunteers, if that makes sense. So green means the dog is great with everybody. Pink, they may pull somewhat. Orange, usually shy or fearful. Yellow, excitable, unleash, reactive, etc., etc. So our concern with TBD is right here. TBD only, training and behavior department only. That's the dogs we work in the training department. And right now we have about 12, I believe, total. So, yeah. So that's that. So we're gonna take out Kalua and get some work done. So I think she, she might be freaked out by the camera a little bit. Oh, good girl. Come on. Good girl. Just shut that behind you. Come here. Yeah, all right. We're gonna, I'm, gonna put, I'm actually going to put her back. I think it's the camera. Yeah, it is. Okay. All right, let me go grab Stark, all right? So you can feel like, honestly, like you can kind of feel the tension off all of them, you know? Like sort of the unsurety. So that was really interesting with Kahlua. It, was, it certainly wasn't you, per se, but you, a stranger, like holding this strange object and then taking in the context of like being in a shelter, in my opinion, all that kind of stress built up on top, you know? And so that's the reaction you get. Cause you could tell she was, she was just unsure and like was more of like a, the bark sounded like, a, not a warning bark is more of like this sort of like, hey, what the heck are you type bark, you know? Um, good boy, buddy. And so this is like the hardest thing 
always is trying to get like just some focus and like some some balance good job buddy and so i'm just going to reward him honestly just for even this behavior right here just for you know sitting focusing and relaxing good job buddy good boy yes good job and so even like you know 10 15 minutes of this you know i think what's unfortunate is probably a lot of the shelters you know can't afford to even have training staff so imagine you know those dogs and how they're doing and it's just it's hard to even get your head around like how it would be to like sit in one confined space right for 23 hours a day and that's kind of the uh the moral dilemma a lot of the times and that those are the things about working with out with dogs that you constantly get to explore like this that thing in all of us that can be really selfish emotionally, you know what I'm saying? And you get to like dissect that and you start to learn like about how you don't have to be selfish. Like it can be all about another thing, creature, species, person, if in that, if, if it needs to be. And that's all right, you know? And so this is Stark. I mean, he's young, you know, he's massive at eight months old. But when he first came in, you know, two weeks ago, he couldn't even do this. He was so stressed. And now he's learned like, okay, when we're in that mode, he can focus. And they always focus for the reward, which is food. Um, it's always about the reward. Come on, buddy. Nice, good job. Good job. I'm gonna just work him on this too. Come here. Nice, okay. Do you know place? Yes, good job, good boy, very good, nice. You know, there's so much like euthanasia that takes place, behavioral euthanasia, especially for dogs under four years old. The trickiest thing about like the shelter world is to diagnose and assess behaviors here in this high stress environment and to try to get a real clear picture of a dog is very difficult. And that's why there's some dogs who, do, who actually do well here and go to a house and don't do well at all, freak, or vice versa, you know? And so that's sort of like the trickiest thing, like sort of these recycling of dogs at times. Please. Oh, he does not know this yet. I thought he had worked this, but we're going to teach him right now. Please. Yes. Good job. Good job, buddy. Good. Free. Nice. Please. Yes. So and everything in life is about rhythm, man. It's all about the rhythm. So we want to get the dog in a rhythm. And that's another challenge is how do you keep a steady rhythm in a high stress environment? Almost impossible. Free. Please. Nice. Good job. As an artist or a creative type, like there's like you're looking for like either a validation because part of you is insecure, but then you're also looking for a recognition. But then you're also mostly just looking to make like a living, do what you love to do. And that's what it came down to for me. It's like writing a book, playing music. Like, how can I just turn this into something that I can like feed myself with and really like just make a living? That's it. And I was making a living as a custodian, but I was terribly unhappy the whole time. So for me, I was like, well, this doesn't, this doesn't make any sense. Like one day you're just not going to be here. And you're gonna look back and go, well, at least I worked 30 years in a job I didn't like at all, but I had a pension. But by the time I got to the pension, I was too like broken down and tired to even enjoy it. So yeah, by 38, I was, I just decided I'm out. Um, I quite literally like just went and bought a minivan and within a couple months packed all my stuff and just drove to California with Tipsy, my dog of, 12 years, my uh, soulmate, soul dog number one. To me, this is like a creative too, you know? This is like a real creative outlet, free. And then you're getting this opportunity to connect with like another creature and like really learning the complexities and the simplicities of them and how your own like human stuff kind of has, has the, the pension of getting in the way of those things, you know? And our job, the only job when you're training dogs or working with dogs is figuring out right, what they need, what they need behaviorally, 
um, what their personality needs because they all have you know different personalities just like us. So they're really, really complex and really, really simple. Free, just like humans. Only they're much better. Please. Yes, good boy. And so Kalua is a really good example. Amazing dog. When she first met you, she was in the hallway. It was super excited. Came up to your leg, but then very quickly it kicks in. Free. Wait, what is this? Who's this person? What's that thing? And I think it happened so quickly because of the added stress of just being here. You know, if she was my dog, you came over for the first time and we were in a house, she trusted me fully, trusted her environment. You gave her some treats like you did and she sees this camera, I think it's a totally different story, you know? And again, and that just alludes to the difficulty of figuring out dog behavior inside of a shelter, in my humble opinion. So California, California Drina, yeah. So the trip to California was, so Tipsy was 12, like, you know, you gotta understand, like she was a 90 pound dog. I mean, this was like, this was like a dog. This was like a, like a bear, you know? She had like, tore her ACL, so she like didn't walk well. Like dogs that size, like they had problems with their hips, but like, she like, I built her a little ramp to get in and out of the van, which she kind of used. But she just like, did what dogs did. Like didn't complain, not one bit. And just was like, right there the whole time. For some reason she loved Arizona. Like she wanted to get out of the car in Arizona like every hour. She's like head out the window, just like love that state for some reason. When you're dealing with a senior dog, that's when it gets starts to get really tricky, you know, because there be, starts to become the questions of right how long do, do we let the dog live like sort of like not really being able to walk too well or you know my thing was always as long as the dog can eat and get outside to go to the bathroom then she's good to go you know what i mean like any other stuff i you know I can treat that with med medication whatever the case like arthritis etc but a week before she passed she passed exactly six months to the day of us september 7th um same day mac miller died actually which is really, uh, I remember that too. Something was off in the morning and I felt it coming. Like I felt something coming for like a couple of days. I was like, man, it's just like, I just think her time is like right here. There was something like, just like this, like the connection I had with her, like you just kind of felt it, you know? Went outside and just was like, kind of collapsed her back, like legs collapsed. And so we were actually staying at this point in like a little 10 foot trailer in a driveway, which was a whole nother thing. She just was like, not doing well she started whining a bunch which was not like her most dogs you know she went to like the driveway and like kind of lay down and that's when i knew and i actually took two pictures with her just two last pictures i just knew those were like her last pictures i still have them actually one of them like she's looking at the camera it's really like it's like right there you know in her eyes um, or maybe that's just me anthropomorphizing, which is like attaching my human feelings that maybe she didn't know at all like she was about to go. And she was just doing what, you know, what we do is try to survive when we're in what any animal does, even us. Not her, her gums were like super pale, which means she's like bleeding inter internally. I, had, I carried her, she was heavy, like I carried her out. And when I was like bringing her to the van on my own, I was just going through this whole experience, like just me and her. Um, which was really lonely, but also kind of like poetic and beautiful. It's just like man and his dog, you know, man and best friend. And like, I take her to the vet. They do a quick like sonogram. And she's, she had a, a tumor on her, on her spleen that had ruptured. Brought her in the room. And like, I just, that was it. I just talked to her for a little bit. It was a really interesting thing because like, in those moments when we're losing somebody, right? I didn't pray either. I, I, I look back on that. Or maybe I kind of did, but didn't like verbally say a prayer, you know? I was just too like caught up in like the pain of the moment and like the sheer like, you feel anxious. Like, dude, I can't believe this is actually it, you know? Um, but I didn't want to take too much time because she's like bleeding out internally. 
And I'm like, this dog, like, she's just giving me enough. I don't, it's, don't, don't make it about you. You know, like, sh they make it about you your whole life in a weird way. They also make it about them. And then you're kind of left with this, like, this big dog that's given you life for 12 and a half years. And now it's just, like, lifeless. But your brain is, it's so hard for your brain to connect that the life is gone. Like, that's no longer a life, you know? That's just a dog's body. And so I'm still hugging her and talking to her, like, you know? You know, usually the doctors hold it together. And I, the doctor that was with me, like, she rent, hurried out of the room. Because I think, you know, they always say, like, something about, like, a grown man crying really, like, hits people for whatever reason, you know? Um, and I think she just... She started to like get emotional and she like just scurried out. And then I, you know, it's, it's weird like being a professional because there's those moments where you want to be a human. Like I just needed somebody to hug. I didn't have anybody. And I didn't like for a week at least until I saw my friend Eric. I saw him on Abbot Kinney Boulevard in the morning. He was like, dude, I can't believe it. And that, when that kid hugged me, forget it. It was like, and that was the greatest dog of my life. Because I was really lonely, man. It was very hard. It was very hard. You know? Still is. She's a great dog. That was tipsy. That was tipsy. Yes, good drop. So you got to trade off with uh, equal or higher value. So even a treat drop. Yes, good job. It's all about the reward. If, if the trade-off isn't high enough value, then you're not getting that ball back. Because right now that has the highest value for him. So I need something of equal value or higher. <laughs> Good drop. Go get it. And this is how you start to teach a dog on a retrieve. Pretty simply. And also drop. Good drop. Yes. Good job. So you see how he quickly picks it up. Yes, good boy. Go get it. Nice. Now this time I'll try with the treat. Right here. Yes, good boy. Good job. Here. Right. Good job. He's pretty awesome, huh? Good boy, buddy. Good boy. That was great. That was great. Well, thank you very much. You're a smart one. Oh. Now you see he's dropping it every time. There's like these little moments. Like what, when you work with, when I worked with a dog like outside or something, it would be like the perfect winch. And then the dog like, you know, and like everything else feels silent. And then there's just like this like, like symbiotic, like dog spell backwards, you know? Positive reinforcement, it takes, it takes the longest, but it creates the strongest behavior. And you know, train humane as they say. That's the really interesting thing about dogs and language, you know? And the human la human language to me, because part of me feels like there's this assumption. Like when we pulled up to the back of the hospital, when I pulled up with her, I opened the van door and I just sat with her and I said, I'm sorry, like, this is like, this is the end of your ride. And I assume she knows what I'm saying. I always say to clients, like dogs don't speak English really well. So, you know, like you gotta really bear with them. But like, I, like I seek, I was seeking like that to let her know, like, I'm still with you, but it's like, you know, it's weird. You, you say it for them, but you're really saying it for you. so painful bro like I'll never forget it it was so incredibly painful 
Um, but we endure, you know, and we just keep going and keep believing. And so I feel like you know, 15 to 20 hours is is a way to stay involved in the work without like really draining yourself. Everybody that works here full time, like I could just give them props. There's no holidays off. It's like 24 seven because like like a hospital, you know, snow, snowstorms, whatever the weather, like and just getting these dogs out and just trying to help give them some sense of like a life.